Hello everyone. Luminar is happy to be here at CES 2024 to talk about the future of autonomy and level four trucking with our partners at Kodiak. My name is Ashley. I sit on Luminar's communications team and I'll be moderating this fireside chat. Join me in welcoming to the stage Luminar's Global Head of Commercial Vehicles Business Development, Lori Heino Royer, and Kodiak's Jamie Hoffiger, Vice President of Hardware. <laughs> Hi, thanks Hello. for having us. Of course, thank you for being here. So let's kick this off. Uh, what does level four autonomy mean to you? Um, yeah, first, uh, Ashley, thanks for having me. Really excited to be here talking about um, autonomous trucking and Kodiak and what we're doing in this space. And so I think first with level four, one of the things that uh, we could do is maybe kind of set the stage, what does that mean? Because it can be kind of confusing when people talk about different levels. Um, so for us, level four, it's really exciting because uh, in the autonomous trucking world, it's the first level where you no longer have operational or safety uh, requirements of a driver. So you actually can go full driver out. Level four is essentially the driver does not have to be there. In autonomous trucking, that's a really big deal. Um, the number one problem when you talk to a lot of carriers and shippers uh, is hiring and retaining uh, you know, great drivers. And so when we go to level four, you're talking about now um, this long haul, uh, it's a really tough job. You're talking about now putting trucks on the road that help with that driver shortage, help alleviate that. So, so that's what we're doing with level four. And Kodiak um, is a level four uh, over the road long haul trucking company. So we essentially have built our stack to require no driver uh, in, in that space. Yeah. And I think that once we get to the point where the driver is out, there's a lot of implications that are that are in addition to that. So one, it helps with the driver shortage, but two, when you look at um, what a company invests in, in buying the tractor and the trailer and putting it together, and then there's laws around how long the driver can actually drive the vehicle. So when you no longer have to abide by those laws, your utilization rate of your assets can go up extremely. And then I think about all of us on the road and how we interact with trucks every day. And these trucks can be operating more primarily at night when we're all sleeping. And so the roads can be much fuller at a different time of day, giving safety to all of us in a way that is not available as well today. And an example, I think, Lori, of that would be every day right now, Kodiak um, has a truck going from Dallas to Atlanta nonstop. So 365 with one of our partners. And this is doing paid autonomous loads. That's a two-day uh, delivery with a driver. Um, with uh, our autonomous system, we do that essentially in 16 hours. There's, there's no need to essentially rest a human driver. So when you talk about efficiency, we can run you know, 16 hour runs, we can do 20 hour runs. Uh, this, is, this is the product that we're putting on the road later this year. Right. So. Where do you see Kodiak and Luminar in five to 10 years, and what can we expect to see out on the roads? So, yeah, do you want to take? You want well, <clears throat> I would say I'll start with, I think Luminar and Kodiak have a great uh, partnership and relationship. Um, we've gone through multiple iterations of our product in use, so um, it's been a very long-term relationship, and we learn a lot from each other. And it's really important in this space as it's evolving and developing, our technology changes, their technology changes, and then you have to fit that new technology into that new technology and bring the pieces. And the fact that we're working so closely together is what allows us to move faster um, because we're, we're engaging on what's coming next. And I'm, I'm giving you the, the specs for it before it comes into place yep. so that you can start to understand what's happening there. And so I want to see that continue to happen and even build stronger. Yeah, I think it's interesting to talk about what we've done, like talking about five to 10 years, where are we today? So with Luminar, we've actually done, so Kodiak has done 5,000 paid loads in autonomy. Those have all been with Luminar. Um, we've had a Luminar uh, LiDAR on every truck essentially since the beginning, and we're on our sixth generation truck, which we announced this week. So it's really interesting to think, we're running autonomous every day. We have a 24 seven operation. That's where we are today. We have a safety driver in the vehicle, when you think about five to 10 years, the difference is, today we fit within the, the existing logistics networks of our customers. So we run, um, with IKEA, we run from Port of Houston to Frisco, Texas uh, every week. And we fit within that, they have a lane that works for us. 
But in five to 10 years, you're going to really think about logistics networks changing to add autonomy, to, to, to do a two-day run to Seattle, which you can't do today with a human driver. So you're going to think about pulling things off of air freight and putting them on trucks. And I think, uh, just thinking about this, you know, there's kind of a joke maybe that uh, you don't get sushi in Des Moines. Well, maybe with autonomous vehicles, we have fresh sushi every day in Des Moines. So we can get rid of maybe that uh, constraint and people in Des Moines will be very happy, I think. Yeah. Wow, it looks like a really exciting future once this is possible. So, um, you know, just kind of going off of um, your answer to that question, Jamie, what is the timeline for the widespread adoption of level four autonomous trucking in the logistics and transportation industry? Yeah, so it, a lot of people are thinking this is the, this is the future. When is it going to happen? So we have 36 trucks on the road today, so three dozen trucks. So we are running every day, 24-7 operation. Um, the widespread adoption will really come when we can, we can build the full safety case and remove the safety driver from our vehicle. Then you see the ex sort of economies of scale, you see the economics shift. Um, we, we will remove that safety driver later this year and launch that with our commercial partners in 2025. And from there, it's really about scaling our fleet, which does take some time. So you should expect to see this scale in that sort of 2025, 2026, 27, 2027 timeframe. That's kind of how we see it. Um, I don't know what you think, Lori. Yeah. Well, I think the timeline is um, the piece that it's exciting to talk about. Um, but, but the reality is, I don't think the timeline is the most important thing. I think doing it in a safe and effective manner where you're learning about everything through the whole process is really the most important piece. I kind of get a little bit nervous when I'm like, oh, the timeline's gonna be this year. I'm gonna make everything happen. I'm gonna pull it out. I'm like, are we really ready for that? And so while the technology is definitely advancing, we have to do things like what Jamie is talking about. We have 30, 36 trucks today. And how do we, what do we learn from them? Okay, we start to take drivers out. What do we learn when we do that? And you, if you do that in mass amount right off the bat, it doesn't work very well. So I, I would just say that I think the timeline is the piece that everyone wants to talk about, but I want the safety to be there and that we ensure that the safety case is 100% bulletproof or as close to that as possible. Yep. And, and for the timeline to be less talked about and more the safety aspects of it and what it brings to us. Yeah, I would quickly add to that, absolutely. When we can, the safety case essentially says, we can handle the hazards in the environment we operate in. So one of the things that we've done at Kodiak to accelerate that timeline is we've limited our environment. We don't operate in city centers. We go from a depot that's adjacent to the freeway. We'll drive on the freeway some number of hours to our destination. Like uh, we do Dallas to Oklahoma City, for example. Um, Dallas, Houston, a five hour run. Then we pull right off the freeway into a depot and we transfer the load to a human driver who then goes into the city and delivers the final the, the a trailer to the final area. We can launch when we build that safety case that says we can run that safely and provably safe. So, th so that's, that's how the timeline is set. It's not like I can say end of this year, but when that safety case is complete, we can launch our system. So that's how the timeline, I think you're absolutely right, Lori, it's set by for how can we do this safely and when can we do it safely? Right. People just want to see them, want to see it happen already. So yeah. <laughs> right. Exactly. So from your commercial to defense applications, we're seeing LiDAR utilized in your software stack. How does Luminar enable the Kodiak autonomous driver with advanced safety capabilities? That one's you. All right. Um, <laughs> yeah, so as I mentioned, uh, Luminar has been part of our stack since the beginning, a uh, great relationship and one of the things that Luminar has that we don't see everywhere is the long range, right? Really like, and I don't mean long range, like, wow, we can see something sometime. It's really the reliability of that long range. So we need to be able to uh, know what we're seeing and know what we're not seeing. If, if sometimes it sees 150 meters and sometimes it sees 200 meters or 250, that doesn't help us. And so Luminar really has a, a very solid, strong sensor. Things like blooming from retro reflectors, Luminar handles really well. So. By using Luminar, what we've been able to do is add lanes, add capabilities to our system. So we use, uh, today we use radar and camera and LiDAR. With a LiDAR that sees down the road at high resolution, 250 meters, um, it takes 200 meters to stop a truck safely so you don't get rear-ended. Seeing, having that 250 meters and beyond allows us to, for example, see somebody in a black leather jacket and on a, when the sun's right in your field of view, 
and the camera is somewhat occluded uh, and they're under an overpass in a shadow, LiDAR doesn't care about that. It brings its own photons essentially to the party. And so that's been a really big boon for us. So just thinking about having that long range LiDAR, we couldn't do this without that. Yeah, and I, I think you know, where Luminar's specialty is, is really that distance. And you know, the FMCSA will tell you it's around 200 meters to stop a fully loaded truck on it at highway speed. And we see past that. We see 250, we see 300. We have these, these distances where we're seeing consistently, not just every once yep. in a while. We can pick up a tire. We can pick up a lot of things that are out there in the road. And it's, it's that ability to know that you have enough distance in the, the, the sensor to be able to stop a fully loaded truck, which is even different than what, what the requirements are on the passenger car. So it's looking at what do we need differently and understanding that, that we meet those needs and, and that they satisfy your pieces as well. And then I think the other piece that's been a great part of this partnership is that, that we work together. And you know, as you guys notice something, you come back to me and say, hey, what's happening over here? Yep. What, what can you do with your LiDAR just a slight bit different that might make this happen? And that's really valuable feedback for us because it helps us as we develop our product and continue to make improvements on it. And I would say Kodiak is one of our best partners in giving us information like that. Yeah, how we've learned together over the last five years it's really interesting where we started and the assumptions we had around how far do you really need to see, what's the latency, um, just working through uh, road spray, for example. What does road spray look like? Um, is it's not an object that you need to avoid necessarily, but you know when it's raining hard and we obviously operate in the rain and at night in long haul trucking, we need to be able to understand, hey, that's not an object we have to avoid. That's road spray coming off another vehicle, for example. These are the things we've worked together on for now about you know five years and I guess two and a half million miles of autonomy in, in our case. So it's really been a great partnership. Yeah. Such exciting things happening. <laughs> so Kodiak's approach to integrating sensors is unique in autonomous trucking. Tell me a little bit more about the sensor pods we see on your trucks and the decision making process to use our technology. Yeah, so all of our perception sensors sit now where the mirror of a truck generally is. So we have everything in, a, in a, what's called a quick swap sensor pod. We've done that um, purposely. We've heard this from our commercial partners keep the truck on the road. And so if you put the sensors everywhere, uh, if you have a sensor, I'll give you an example. You're in Jackson, Mississippi at 4 a.m., freezing rain, and a sensor breaks in the top of your vehicle. How are you going to fix that? Someone's not going to climb up in the vehicle in the freezing rain. And the, the shipper or carrier does not want their truck sitting there for four hours or, or two hours or, or getting towed back to a depot that a specialized technician has to replace a, a, a LiDAR or a camera. Not that it would ever be a LiDAR, of course, but a, but a camera. Um, so essentially, we've put it all in a uh, sensor pod that um, is accessible and can be replaced very quickly. That sensor pod comes from a factory pre-calibrated. You can pop the sensor pod that has an issue off and put a new one on. It will calibrate itself to the truck. It has LiDAR and cameras that we can use. And then it can be on the road in about 20 minutes. And we've shown a video of this where we showed we had a truck pull into a depot with a flat tire. We had a truck pull into a depot with a broken sensor pod, and we've shown that we could actually change the sensor pod in the same time it takes to change that tire. So that's really something that we've had from the sort of third generation of our vehicle, and it directly comes from feedback from fleets. Wow. Um, and it's something that really sort of just differentiated us from other approaches. We're really proud of that. That's amazing. It's really great to see, and I think it's a unique approach, and I think that kind of goes, I'll say, to the Kodiak way of how I see things, that they really look at um, the issue that everyone's trying to solve is the same, have the truck drive without a, without a person behind it and really use the, all of the technology to do that. But it can be done in so many different ways. And I think the most important thing is there's no one right answer. Um, there's a lot of different ways to do it. And I think all the approaches really are needed in order to get to the point where when we can hit this timeline that we talked about earlier, yeah. that, that there's a lot of ways that we're making sure that that safety is there every single time. Right. And Lori, I wanted to say, I thought you were going to take credit for this a little bit because <laughs> one of the things that enabled us to move every, all of our perception to that pod is the iris sensor. So as you know, the sensor before that did not, was not a form factor that would have fit in a, in a compact pod on the side. So we had many, com many conversations about the form factor, we still sometimes do, yes. and the iris essentially is one of the key enablers of that. So uh, Luminar is a big part of allowing us to deploy that next generation system and really tell that story about keeping trucks on the road. 
Awesome stuff. So I want to thank you both for your time. Um, and do you have any final remarks that you want to leave with our attendees here? I, I think I'd probably say from my side, um, autonomous trucking really is, it's not like the future of like, you know, it's always the future. It's actually happening today. And you will see this, it's really exciting. We're really excited at Kodiak. You're gonna see this on the road um, without drivers in the next couple of years. And that's, this is something that's been talked about now for a couple of decades. I think Lori knows this. <laughs> and so putting it on the road, we're, we're there. And um, I just want people to understand that this is something they should expect to see in the near future. And if you're not part of this story, please become part of it. Cause I think it's really gonna be game changing. Yes. I want to thank you, Jamie, for being a part of this and for being such a great partner. And it's, it's working with uh, you and your team that make this whole experience amazing for us at Luminar. And so we just want to thank you. All right. Thank you. Great, thank you.